is good. The Lord is good. Aren't you thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning and to feel the presence of the Lord? How many feels better already being in the house of the Lord this morning in just a few short minutes that we're here today? Amen. Before we read our text this morning, would you raise your hands and let's love him right now and let's pray that God would do a work among us and the hand of God would rest upon us today and the touch of God would overshadow us today. We love you, Lord. We praise your mighty name. We love your mighty name. We worship your mighty name. And God, I pray that, God, you would meet every need, every situation today. I pray the touch of the Holy Ghost would come upon every individual today. Oh, God, God, we need you this day. We need you this hour. We need you this very moment. In the name of Almighty God, I want to say to all of our guests, we're so thankful that you're with us this morning. Would you give them a warm welcome? Amen. Let them know that they're a blessing to us by being in the house of the Lord today. Amen. We love you so very, very much. Amen. Are you ready for the word of the Lord this morning? If you're ready for the word of the Lord, shout amen. Amen. The Lord is here to touch us and minister to us. I thank God for his word. I thank God for the power that's in the word of God. I thank God for the anointing that's in the word of God. Amen, 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 amen. I want to align myself to the word of God more so than ever before in the day and hour that we're living in. There are so many people that's turning away from the things of God, the ways of God, the truth of the Word of God. Uh, but there's just a touch in my spirit that makes me want to align myself to the Word of God like never before. Amen. How many feels that way this morning? Amen. I want to live it. I want to live it. Not only here, but I want to live it. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. You're physically able, I ask you to stand for the reading of the word. If you're not physically able, I totally understand. Luke chapter 15, it's quite lengthy portion of scripture, but it's important for us to read this whole text today. Luke chapter 15, amen, beginning with verse 11, reading through verse 32. Some of you have been very, very sick, unable to be in the house of the Lord, and we're thankful the Lord has touched your body and ministered to you, and you're able to be here today with us. Amen. Luke chapter 15, reading verse 11 through verse 32. If you're ready for the word of the Lord, shout amen. amen. And Jesus said, a certain man had two sons. Everyone shout two sons. Shout it again, two sons. That's vitally important to understand that there were two sons. And the younger, everyone shout the younger. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, when he came to himself, when he understood the situation that he was in, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and despair, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. No more worthy to be called thy son, make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Everyone shout the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again and he was lost and is found and they began to marry now look at verse 25 through verse 32 this is where we want to focus our attention this morning now his elder son everyone shout his elder son now his elder son was in the field he was busy 
He was doing what he's always done. He was faithful. He was loyal to his father. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, as he approached the house, he heard something quite strange. He heard music and dancing. And so because of that, the Bible says that he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. What in the world is going on? Why do I hear the music and why do I hear the dancing? And he said unto him, thy brother is come. Thy brother is home. And thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And verse 28 says, and he was angry. The eldest brother was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering, saying to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Look at verse 25 again. It says, Now his elder son was in the field, and he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dancing. And verse 28 says, He was angry and would not go in. By the help of the Lord this morning, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, for the next few moments, I want to preach to you on this thought. Don't miss the party. Don't miss the party. Would you raise your hands right now and let's pray and let's ask God to anoint His Word and the touch of the Holy Ghost is in this house right now. <laughs> In the name of the Almighty God, I thank you for the touch of the Holy Ghost that's ever present. And God, I believe that you want to speak to your people today. I believe that you want to minister to your people today through the, through the Word of God, through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And God, that which you would have me to do this hour, I pray that God it would be with fervency and power of the Holy Ghost. And I pray, God, that you would minister to us, every man, every woman, every young person today, almighty God, every saint of God, every guest. I pray that you would anoint my mind and anoint my tongue as I speak and declare what thus saith the word of the Lord. And God, may we forever be changed by that word, that powerful word. I thank you for what is in this house right now. And I thank you for what you're doing among your people. And may we receive your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're thankful now, would you put your hands together and give God praise? Oh, clap your hands and give him praise and thank him for his word. We love you today. We magnify you today, oh God. We magnify you today, oh God. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, don't miss the party. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Usually this renowned chapter of the Bible is broken up by writers and preachers and dealt with as containing three precious distinct parables. In this chapter, did not read it today, but verses 1 through 7, you will find the lost sheep. Did not read it this morning, but in verses 8 through 10, you will find the lost coin. But also you will find in what we read this morning, the lost son. Actually, however, the whole chapter is but one parable having three pictures. There is no break in the verses. One illustration flows into the other. So when we read in Luke chapter 15 and verse 3, it says, And he spake this parable unto them. The singular form this parable means that the entire chapter constitutes the particular parable. While there are succeeding stages in the parable, there is no break. The illustrations that Jesus used in it merge and blends together perfectly and beautifully. And by means of this triune parable, Jesus set forth the supreme fact that as the Son of Man, He came into the world to seek and to save those that are lost. The three parables recorded in this chapter are not repetitious. They all declare the same main truth, but each one reveals a different phase of it. 
Concern over something lost and joy at the recovery of that which was lost is the prominent note of each simile our Lord used. At the heart of this masterpiece of parabolic literature, the sheep, the coin, and the sun were all lost and all worth saving. Let me stop right here this morning and say to you, whether you're lost and know that you're lost but don't know your way home, you're worth saving. Let me stop right here and say this this morning, that whether you're lost and you just simply don't know it, uh, or whether you know you're lost and you know your way home, it makes no difference where you may find yourself, uh, whether you're a sheep, whether you're a coin, whether you're a lost coin. The adversary of our soul will tell you that no one is concerned about you uh, and no one is worried about you. Uh, the adversary of our soul will tell you that no one is looking for you uh, and the devil will tell you you're just one sheep. Uh, the devil will tell you you're just one one coin and the devil will tell you you're just a wayward son however I've come to tell somebody today under the anointing of the Holy Ghost you're worth saving I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost right now I've come to tell somebody today on this Sunday morning October the 4th you're worth going after and you're worth the blood and the sweat and the tears I've come to tell somebody this morning you're a sheep that has a shepherd and you're a coin that has much value and you're a wayward son that has a home and that has a father waiting and that has a party prepared to be thrown in your honor. Yes, I know you don't feel like much. And yes, I know you don't see yourself as God sees you. And yes, I know it feels like at times no one is there for you, more or less searching for you. And yes, I know you feel like you're of no value. And yes, I know you feel as though if you would be misplaced, that no one would care. Yes, I know at times you feel lonely and isolated and abandoned. And yes, I know you have found yourself living with the pigs and you are a man your mind is a mess and your spirit is a mess and your life is a mess and everything about you is a mess why would anybody want you why would anybody care for you why would anybody love you and why would anybody welcome you let me set the record straight today you are of much value and you are a possession that God will drop everything and come searching for you I feel the Holy Ghost right now to tell somebody he'll climb the highest mountain he'll go to the lowest valley he'll He'll search high and low. He'll go to wandering pastures or pens of filth. He'll move all of heaven to touch you. He'll move all of heaven to meet you. He'll move all of heaven to reach you today. My God, if you're thankful, clap your hands and give God praise. I've come to tell you if God did it for me, then God will do it for you. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I've come to tell you. He's well aware. Shout, he's well aware. <laughs> Today we could spend a lot of time on the lost sheep and the lost coin. However, we are going to focus on the third and very important picture of this parable. We are going to look at it in a way that many of you may never looked at it before. We're going to focus our attention not upon the father, not necessarily upon the pigs and not on the lost son, and not on the things that the lost son received when he got home. We're going to draw our attention upon the son that stayed home, that had everything that had an inheritance that was faithful, that was there through thick and thin, that was there when everything was going right and when everything was going wrong. Luke makes an easy transition from the second picture to the third with the words, and he said. All three were spoken to the same persons on the same occasion and emphasized the same central message, namely the dispensation of divine grace and mercy. It is unequaled in literature for its tenderness and grace and pathos, and Jesus knew how to touch the heartstrings. And at the outset, let us note that the Bible does not call the son who left home a prodigal. The parable opens with a reference to two sons who were not twins and certainly not a pair. Broadly speaking, the parable is in three stages, the rejection of home, and then the return to home, and then the reception at home. An old writer put it this way, at home, away from home, and back home. We see the lost son sick of home, and then home sick, and finally home bent. His two vastly different requests were give me and make me. And all the dissatisfied young man wanted to do was fill his belly and live for satisfaction of his fleshly desires. The younger son took all of his portion and went abroad. But then we have the case of the elder brother. 
a difficult one because he looked so good. He kept his room straight and his nose clean and he played by the rules and paid all his dues. His resume impeccable, his credit squeaky clean, his faithfulness flawless and loyalty while his brother was sowing wild oats and while his brother was doing whatever his heart desired and while his brother was living the life and while his brother was unfaithful and while his brother had left his father, he stayed home and sowed crops and he stayed home and tended to the flock. He stayed home and helped to pick up the pieces. He he stayed home and was at the same place at the same time every single day. He stayed home and was una unwavering and steadfast in his commitment. The eldest brother stayed home and in spite of the things that he wanted to do and the places he wanted to go, he stayed home and did his job as well as his brothers. He stayed home and was what he knew the father wanted him to be. On the outside, he was everything a father could want in a son. But on the inside, after a period of time, he became sour and hollow. On the outside, on the inside at a period of time he became resentful and indignant on the inside after a period of time he became offended and insulted and hurt and dejected and dispirited and distressed and overcome by jealousy and consumed by anger but the worst of it all blinded by bitterness yes many of us can probably understand these emotions and what he was feeling that very day the boy broke his father's heart by taking the inheritance and taking off. He traded his dignity for a whiskey bottle and his self-respect for a pig pen. Then comes the son's sorrow and his decision to go home. He hopes his dad will give him a job on the farm and an apartment over the garage. But what he finds is a father who has kept his absent son's place set at the table and the porch light on every night. The Bible says that the father is so excited to see his son that you'll never guess what he does. That's right. He throws him a party we party loving prodigals love what he did but infuriated the elder brother for verse 28 says the older son was angry it's not hard to see why so this is how a guy gets recognition in the family get drunk and go broke and do whatever you want to do and you come home when you get a party so he sat outside the house and pouted and when his father came out to meet him, the son started at the top listing the atrocities of his life. To hear him say it, his woes began the day that he was born. For verses 29 and 30 tells us that he declared, I served you like a slave for many years. And I've always obeyed your commands, but you never gave me a young goat to have at a feast with my friends. But your other son, who wasted all your money on prostitutes, came home and you killed a fatted calf and had a party for him. I don't understand. Look at the things that he has done. I I do not understand. Look at the life that he lived. I do not understand. I, I can't grasp it. Don't you remember that he left us? Don't you remember that he walked away from this house? Don't you remember that he turned his back on us? Father, don't you remember that he used you for just what he wanted? And now you're throwing him a party and you're having a celebration. I just don't understand. It appears that both sons time in the pig pen, one in the pig pen of rebellion, the other in the pig pen of self-pity. The younger one has come home, the older one hasn't. He is still in the slop. He is saying the same things you said when a kid down the street got a bicycle and you didn't, and you declare it's not fair. Oh, when someone received a financial blessing and you didn't, you declare it's not fair. When God has blessed someone with a great ministry and God hasn't blessed you yet with that ministry and you declare it's not fair. When God heals their body and not yours or your family's and you declare it's not fair. When God provides, when God gives, when God brings about their deliverance and their miracle and their way of escape and you declare it's not fair. When their answer arrives and when their blessing knocks on the door and when their promise is fulfilled and when their dreams are realized and when their hopes have come to fruition, I hear some declare it's not fair. When God moves suddenly for them, when God moves unexpectedly for them, when God without notice pours out on them miracles and signs and wonders and we're sitting there in faithfulness and dedication and loyalty and we don't understand and we shout out it's not fair when God throws a party because they have come back home but wait a minute look at what they have done but wait a minute God look where they have been but wait a minute God I don't understand I've been here all the time it's not fair he was the one that left while I stayed he was the one that walked away from this house while I stayed he was 
was the one that turned his back on you while I stayed. He was the one that broke your heart and brought tears to your eyes while I stayed. He was the one that removed himself from your presence, but here I am staying. He was the one that did his own thing and went his own way and lived his own life, but while I stayed, I don't understand what's going on. He was the one that no longer wanted to reside in this house and be a part of this family while I stayed. And now you're throwing him this party and this great celebration. It is not fair. Listen to me today when I tell you that the black and cold bitterness denies easy escape. The sides are slippery with resentment and the floor of muddy anger steals the feet. A stench of betrayal fills the air and stings the eyes. A cloud of self-pity blocks the view of the tiny exit above. Step in and look at the prisoners. Victims are chained to the walls. And victims of betrayal, they lift their chains as they life. As they lift their voices and wail loud and long, they wail. They grumble, they're angry at others who got what they didn't. They soak God as a against me and they boast I followed the rules and I played fairly in fact better than anybody else God I have been faithful I've been faithful in my worship I've been faithful in my ministry I've been faithful in prayer meetings God I've been faithful with my tithe and offering God I've been faithful in holiness and godliness and righteousness they whine nobody listens to me nobody remembers me nobody cares about me God where are you at is this how you honor faithfulness if you look at them the elder brother on the outside. Everything they show is apostolic. They pray, they talk in tongues, they shout, they dance, they sing, they clap their hands, they live in holiness, they walk after righteousness, they are committed, they are loyal, they are steadfast, and they are dedicated, and they are faithful. However, on the inside, they find themselves dealing with some things due to the elder brother syndrome. They're angry, and they're sullen, and they're accusatory, and they're arrogant, and they're humiliated, and they feel slighted snubbed and disrespected and ignored and disregarded and disappointed and insulted and offended and hurt and wounded and confused and angry and incest and through these emotions they're crying out God he was in and out God he wanted to leave home and now he wants to come back God he desired it but then he didn't God he wanted to live riotously and now he desires to be in the father's house God he wanted to do his own thing and now he's willing to submit himself to you as I stand by and watch all of this faithfulness faithful in the way faithful in the truth faithful in worship faithful in praise faithful in word faithful in ministry faithful in what you have given me faithful in all my ways faithful going out and coming in and you throw him a party let me stop right here and say this I know I'm talking to some people today because I felt the very same way I remain faithful every day of my life since I was born but just sometimes it seems that God moves quicker for others and it seems that sometimes Sometimes people are in and people are out and people live for God and then they don't live for God and people are holy then they're not holy but then all of a sudden it seems that as they pray and as they seek God God in heaven begins to throw a party and we understand God I don't quite understand what's going on I've been faithful in all these things let me stop right here and say this to you that God says if you're faithful over a few things then God is going to make you ruler over many I've come to preach to an apostolic man I've come to preach to an apostolic woman you just hang on because God is going to bless your faithfulness. God is going to bless your loyalty. God is going to bless your determination. God is going to bless your commitment. I've come to tell a man and a woman, you keep on praising God. You keep on worshiping God. You keep on magnifying God. You keep on glorifying the Bokosata because I've come to tell you, sooner or later God is going to bless you and God is going to provide for you. All if you believe that, clap your hands right now and give God praise. I've come to tell you at times it may seem like that God is throwing a party for the younger brother, but I've come to tell you there's some eldest brothers in this house that says, God, it does not matter. I'm going to remain faithful. It does not matter what anybody else does and what anybody else says. I may have a younger brother that'll leave the house of God, but I'm not leaving. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Come on, I've come to preach to a man and a woman right now, especially in the day and hour that we're living in. Now is the time not to walk away. Now is the time not to pull out the white flag. Now is the time not to call it quits. Now is not the time to say, God, give me what I want, and I'm leaving the house. I've come to tell you, now is the time to stay in the house. Now is the time to be faithful to the Father. All of you believe that, clap your hands and give God praise right now.
Oh, come on, clap your hands and magnify God. I'm preaching to some elders, brothers in this house right now that's saying, God, I've made up my mind. Ah. The dungeon deep and dark and lonely is beckoning us to enter. You can, you know. You've experienced enough hurt in your life. Why do I have to see this from my younger brother? You have been betrayed enough times and it seems that you've been hurt so much and betrayed enough times that you wake up every day expecting to be hurt and betrayed once again. You have experienced rejection and you have a history of rejection and you've experienced disappointments before because now because of that fact, every time you turn the corner, you're waiting for rejection and you're waiting for a hurt uh, and you're waiting for disappointments uh, and you're waiting to be betrayed. You have suffered from offense uh, in times past. Uh, family has offended you and pastor has offended you uh, and the church has offended you. And yes, at times God uh, even has offended you and you're looking for offense uh, everywhere you go. Uh, haven't you been left out, left behind or left out in the cold sometime uh, or another? Be careful. You're a candidate for the dungeon. Uh, be careful. You're the candidate of an elder brother syndrome. We can choose like so many to chain ourselves to our hurts. We can choose like so many others to chain ourselves to our pain. We can choose like so many others to chain ourselves to our disappointments and our offense, to the anger that rises up within us. Or we can choose to put it away before they become hates. We can choose to go to the party. We can choose to go to the celebration. We can choose to pick up the party hat and celebrate with him. We can choose to pick up the party favor and celebrate with him. We can choose to weep with those who weep. And rejoice with those who rejoice. You have a place there. You have an inheritance. You have a name beside your plate. No one can take away your sonship to Almighty God. I've come to preach to somebody right now. Don't let anger and don't let offense and don't let hurt and pain and disappointments and bitterness get a hold of your life and see the Father in the Father's house as someone and something that is against you and not for you. Sometimes because of all the hurt you experience and sometimes because of all the pain you experience and sometimes Sometimes because of all the disappointments you experience, you then believe that God is against you. And you then believe that the church is against you. Let me remind you what the Bible says. If God be for me. I'm trying to put that in someone's spirit right now because the devil's been talking to you and saying that God is against you and that God doesn't desire you to be blessed and God doesn't desire you for you to be healed and God doesn't desire to give you divine favor and God doesn't desire to bring you out. I declare right now in the name that is above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I come against that thought right now in your mind that the enemy has sent to you. If God be for me, nothing can be against me. If God be for me, hell can be against me. If God be for me, Satan can't be against me. If God be for me, this world can't be against me. All of you believe it, clap your hands right now and give God praise. I've come to tell you that God is not against you. The church is not against you. You need to shake that off in Jesus' name and declare, I'm not missing the party. I'm not missing the celebration. I'm going to have the right attitude, right spirit, right heart, and right perspective because all that the Father has in the house is mine. All of you believe it, clap your hands and give God praise. Why don't you clap your hands for about 30 seconds and magnify and glorify God and lift your voice and declare, I know who my daddy is. And if my daddy would do it for my younger brother, then my daddy's going to do it for me. right now. Let me set the record straight. I've come to declare, you need to declare right now in the spirit, mercy is mine as well. Grace is mine as well. Compassion is mine as well. Forgiveness and restoration is mine as well. Favor that comes from God is mine. Blessings that come from God is mine. Unconditional love is mine as well. Peace is mine as well. All that the Father has, all that the Father has, all that the Father has, all that the father has is mine it's not only for my younger brother it's for the eldest brother it's for everyone in the house some of us 
have to be careful because for those of us who have never had a prodigal spirit, most of us have had a pouting spirit. I'm going there whether you want me to or not. Some of you have never had a prodigal spirit, but you've had a pouting spirit. You may have never backslidden. You may have never walked away from the Father's house. You may have never left the Father's presence. You may have always been around the Father's house and in the Father's house. And you may have never thought about leaving, so the prodigal message is not for you. However, I have a message for that one that is not liking the music that is being played for someone else. I have a message for that one that's not liking the dancing being done for someone else. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I have a message for that one that's not liking the fatted calf being prepared for someone else. I'm talking to somebody right now and the message is for that one uh, that's not liking the table being set for someone else uh, and that's not liking the streamer being hung for someone else uh, and that's not liking the party favors being passed out uh, in celebration for someone else. Uh, I've got a message for you today. Quit your pouting. I'm going to say that again. Quit your pouting. Oh, I'm going to go a little further. Someone gets their miracle and you stand over in the corner with your arms crossed, pouting and turning your nose up at God. Well, God, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. I've been in church all my life and God, you give that to them, but God, what in the world's going on? I just don't understand. Well, God, I'm not going to praise you. I'm not going to worship you. I'm not going to until you do something. I look at that window and I see this party going on, but God, look what I've done. Look where I've been. I've stepped in the pulpit and preached. I've been faithful to prayer meeting and the things of God and the ways of God. But God, you're not doing it for me. I'm tired and done. You haven't been a prodigal son, but you've got a pouting spirit. Someone gets deliverance and there you are in the corner pouting. Someone gets their provision and there you are in the corner pouting. You hear a song of victory. Well, I'm not going back to church. God didn't do that for me. Who do they think they are? Who does God think he is that God will move like that for them? Don't God understand who I am and what I've done? I'm fifth generation Pentecost. God, why did you do that for them and not for me? Quit your pouting. You don't have a prodigal spirit. you got a pouting spirit. You, have, you see a celebratory atmosphere. You walk into the house of God and on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night, there is a celebratory atmosphere because someone's been healed and someone's been delivered and someone needed a job and someone needed a way where there seemed to be no way and someone needed a door to be opened and God opened that door and, and all of a sudden you walk in and you sense that and you're thinking, oh God, you did that for them and here I've been praying for years and I've been faithful in tithe and offering. God, I am not going to do a thing. I'm going to sit on you and teach you a lesson. I'm not going to look through the windows and I'm not even talking to the Father, I want a servant to come tell me what's going on because I'm too mad. I'm too angry. I'm too offended. You don't have a prodigal spirit. you got a pouting spirit. Someone has been showing favor from the Father and there is someone pouting there's some pouting going up uh, in their spirit. Uh, someone has done anything uh, and everything they wanted to do and now that they're back home uh, and the Father treats them as if they're never left, uh, there's a pouting spirit. I know, I felt it too. I've seen it before and the devil's tried to get me with that. Uh, you see a saint of God come back into the house of God that hadn't been in church for 15 years uh, and all of a sudden they walk down that aisle and throw their hands in the air and boom, uh, immediately God renews them in the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, and then all of a sudden a week later they lay their hands on somebody and boom, uh, somebody is healed. Uh, all of a sudden you get a phone call or you see something on Facebook uh, and that saint of God that's been living riotously uh, and doing anything and everything they wanted to do for years, uh, all of a sudden they declare and profess uh, on Facebook, you ain't going to believe it. God's been so good to me. Uh, he just blessed me and my family. He just did this and just did that and blessed me with a new job uh, and I got a $5 raise uh, and here we are pouting saying, God, I don't understand. Uh, I've been faithful. I've been in my position every day. Uh, I've kept my responsibilities every day. Uh, but God, I just don't understand what's going on you don't have a prodigal spirit you've got a pouting spirit 
And I hear the voice of the older brother syndrome shouting, if you think that I'm going to show up at that party, you're sadly mistaken. If you think that I'm going to join that celebration, no way, honey. If you think that I'm going to get my party hat and have some cake, you're out of your mind. If you think that I'm going to get involved in this celebratory environment and rejoice with you because of what the Father has done, you've lost your mind. I've been faithful and this happens. I've been loyal and this happens. I've been dedicated and this happens. I've been steadfast and this happens. I've been devoted and this happens you refuse to engage in celebration because the celebration does not revolve around you can I break it down a little further right now musicians come let me tell you today that some of you need to learn how to celebrate your neighbor's blessing I'm rocking some of your worlds right now, but God has told me to do what I'm doing right now. If I can get your heart and mind and spirit right, then God's going to bless you above and beyond measure. Let me tell you today that some of you need to learn how to celebrate your neighbor's provisions. Let me tell you today that some of you need to learn how to celebrate your neighbor's victories. You know what you need to do when you see a saint of God? Out in that aisle shouting and worshiping because of the victory that God gave them. And some walls they've been praying for for a long time to fall. You don't need to sit there and have a pouting spirit. You know what you need to do? You need to get out in the aisle with them and say, let me be a part of the party. Let me be a part of the celebration. Because if you'll worship with them and if you'll praise with them, then honey, I guarantee you God is going to bless you. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in fire. <laughs> Can I break it down even further? You need to learn to how to celebrate your neighbor's deliverance. You need to learn how to celebrate your neighbor's success. You need to learn how to praise God for somebody else when they're promoted. Well, why didn't God promote me? I don't know. Why didn't the pastor promote me? I'll tell you why. Because he probably sent some things in your spirit that you have an elder brother syndrome. And you'll do more harm being a part of the team than not being a part of the team. Woo! You need to learn how to praise God for somebody else when they're healed. My God. You need to learn how to praise God for somebody else when they're restored. You need to learn how to praise God for somebody else when they experience freedom in the Holy Ghost. You need to learn how to rejoice for somebody else when they experience the favor of God. You need to learn how to rejoice for somebody else when they're experiencing a breakthrough in their life. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the same Lord is rich unto all that call upon him and I know that the same resources that were available unto them are also are available unto me my God I hear the father shouting today quit your pouting and join the party thou art ever with me and all that I have is thine you know what you need to do today you need to get it in your spirit and say I celebrate with you today I hear the music I smell the cake I smell the fatted calf being cooked And instead of me looking through the window, down at my brother or sister, and getting mad because the Father hasn't done that for me, let me check my spirit. Let me check my mind and attitude and know there go I by the grace of God. And I know if my daddy 
did that for him in his moment of weakness. Did I know my daddy will do that for me? Let me just walk in and take my brother by the hand and say, I know I've been faithful. I know I've done what I needed to do and I don't understand but I worship and I rejoice and I celebrate with you for what the Father is doing. Notice in that scripture that there is no ending to the story. Notice in that parable that Jesus does not let you know what has happened to the elder brother. Does he change his mind and go back in? Or does he continually move himself away from the party? Does he leave the house altogether? Does he become full of bitterness and anger and strife and hate his family and hate his father because of what has happened? I don't know. The parable doesn't end like that. We don't understand. I'll tell you why there is not an ending to give us an understanding of what happened to the elder brother. Because what you do is different than what I will do. How you respond is different than how I respond. When that saint of God, when that friend, that neighbor, that loved one, and that hey, younger brother receives from God, will you pout or will you rejoice and celebrate the victory? I want you to stand to your feet all across this building right now. All across this building. No one exiting the building right now. The glory of the Lord, the power of God is in this house right now. The touch of the Holy Ghost is in this house right now. Those of you, and I want you to be honest this morning, those of you that need a miracle, raise your hand. Those of you that need deliverance, raise your hand. Those of you that need the favor of God, raise your hand. Those of you that need a way of an escape in some situations, raise your hand right now. Now put them down. Those of you that's received a healing in your body in times past, raise your hand. Those of you that received miracles in times past, raise your hand. Those of you... That have received a touch of God, raise your hand. Now, those of you that need a miracle, can you rejoice and celebrate with those that God has done that for? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I know there's some families in here. They say, I recognize that God has done a work for their family. But if you can celebrate with them, then could it be that that very same Father will do a work in your family? My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I want you to reach over and take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside her right now. And we're going to go to the party together right now. We're going to go celebrate together right now. There's going to be a celebratory atmosphere in this house right now. Because if my daddy did it for you, then I know he'll do it for me. It's not only yours, it's also mine. It's not only yours, it's also mine. It's not only yours, it's also mine. I've come to tell you mercy is yours as well. Grace is yours as well. Compassion is yours as well. Forgiveness. My God, I feel a Holy Ghost in this house. I feel a moving of God in this house right now. Restoration is yours as well. Blessings is yours as well. Provisions and peace is yours as well. All that the Father has, all that the Father has is yours as well. Come on, I want you to praise Him. I want you to love Him right now. I want you to love him right now. Say, I'm going to go to the party with you. I'm going to celebrate with you. One day in your 
What I want us to do right now, every single person, take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside her right now. And I want you to raise that hand in the air right now. Our classes are coming in. That's perfectly fine. They're not disturbing me at all in any way, shape, or form. I want you to raise that hand in the air right now. The glory of the Lord desires to do a good work in this house right now. If you'll just focus on your attention on Him and you'll begin to worship and magnify the Father and you'll quit looking out the window and declare, I don't understand why God didn't do it for me. I don't understand why God didn't do it for my family. I don't understand why God hasn't blessed me. If you'll just worship and if you'll just praise and if you'll just have a party with your neighbor right now I believe that healing is going to fall in this house I believe that deliverance is going to fall in this house I believe a touch of God is going to fall in this house by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus I loose it upon your people I loose it upon your people right now in the name of Jesus I loose it upon your people I celebrate I thank God I rejoice together I love you together I thank you together I lose healing, I lose deliverance I lose the touch of the Holy Ghost right now In the name of Jesus Christ Oh, that's it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. God is doing a work in this house. God is bringing healing in this house. God is bringing deliverance in this house. Our voice in victory. We're going to make your praise and praise loud. The enemy is there. 